Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. We're back out in the garage here, gonna get some work done on the mini snowcat. Uh, in the last video I mentioned that there was a little bit of a temperature issue with the hydraulic fluid, so we're going to address that by installing a oil cooler on the front of the cat. And we're also going to flush out the old hydraulic oil and put in something that's going to be a little bit more suitable for the hydrostatic drive. Alright, so before we get any further into this build, I think it's worth taking a minute to look at exactly what does efficiency mean. When it comes to the Mini Snowcat, we have a 27 horsepower engine. If the system efficiency was 100%, that would mean that all of the power generated would be transmitted to the drive system and the tracks. 27 horsepower in would be 27 horsepower out, and 100% of the power would be transferred. Unfortunately, with hydrostatic systems, uh, that's the pump and the motor, there are inherent inefficiencies in those components. For pumps and motors, they're typically around 80% efficient. So, we have 80% efficiency for the pump and 80% efficiency for the motor. But what does this mean for the overall system efficiency? Well, we multiply these two factors and we get a total system efficiency of only 64%. This is the critical number here and this tells us exactly what's going on. With 64% of the power being transferred to the tracks, that means that the remaining 36% of energy generated is being converted directly to heat, nothing else. How much heat is that? Well, if we have a 27 horsepower engine, 36% of that would mean that 9.72 horsepower is being lost directly to heat. To put that into context, that's approximately 27,700 BTUs of energy, or if you think of it from a more practical standpoint, that would be about 7,200 watts of heating energy. If you think of your home hot water heater, that's typically 4,500 to 4,800 watts. When you compare that to the mini snowcat, we're generating almost 7,200 watts of heat. So what's the solution? If we can get an oil cooler that will dissipate more heat than is generated, we should be able to get the temperatures under control. So, knowing that I needed approximately 28,000 BTUs of heat dissipation, I ordered a 30,000 BTU oil cooler. So like I mentioned, we're going to be installing an oil cooler on the Snowcat, and that's going to basically serve as a cooler for the left and right tracks. And uh, let's take a look at what we've got. So here's our oil cooler. I figured it would probably be best to have it mounted up in the front here so what I'm going to do is uh, get these mounting holes marked onto the front of the cat and then we'll get that screwed into place and I can get the uh, the wiring connected in. Fortunately right behind here on the dashboard is the uh, electrical control panel and the fuse panel so I can tie the, the fan controls right in uh, to the electrical system there. I shouldn't have to reroute any wiring. Super easy. Four screws, pre-drilled, attached to the front. It's all mounted in place now. So I think what I might end up doing eventually is building a little metal wire frame to protect it a little bit more, just so it doesn't get damaged or anything while out on the uh, on the trails. And so the next thing to do is uh, take a look at routing the hoses, basically from here down in and under the tunnel so <clears throat> the hoses are going to come from up front right there and two of them let's see, hard to see here Get a light on that. that is the return line going into the hydraulic reservoir so those two lines that you see in the light right there are actually going to get taken out those come from the two pumps so they're going to go from the pumps up to the oil cooler and then from the oil cooler 
they'll come back into the system at those two spots right there. Okay, so we have a hose mocked up here. This is the the oil cooler hose that I ordered right along with um, the oil cooler itself. It's rated for 300 PSI, which is plenty for a return line. And uh, I'm quite impressed with these AN fittings uh, from Summit. They're actually quite uh, easy to put on the hose and uh, for three or four bucks you can make a hose right here in the garage whereas uh, previously I was just getting high pressure lines made up um, and those get really expensive the connectors or the, the you know the crimp on ends are probably ten twelve dollars each and uh, the hose is four or five dollars a foot so probably looking forty fifty bucks Per hose so it adds up quick so I'm gonna keep this in mind for future projects I'm gonna see how well it keeps the hydraulic system cooled um, just moving air through and what I might end up doing is drilling a couple of holes right through the front of the snowcat and just capturing some of that heat in the cab and then I might not even have to install a diesel heater I can hopefully just rely solely on the hydraulic system for heating. And something else that I was uh, considering doing, because I'm going to be going to a different type of hydraulic fluid here, I'm a little bit worried about low temperature startup. It's going to be a lot more um, viscous fluid, so starting at low temperature is going to become an issue. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, right on the oil reservoir there, I'm going to attach a strip here, about 120 watts, and hopefully that can get the oil in that reservoir up to temperature uh, before starting the snowcat and then when I start it the oil will get drawn right from the cooler straight into the pumps and get those up to temperature a little bit fast. All right sorry to do this I just didn't quite like the way that the oil cooler looked uh, going vertical so I mounted it uh, spun it 90 degrees mounted it so it's a little bit wider now I know that the lines are going to have to come off on a 90 degree and go down. That might actually be a little bit easier for routing through the tunnel. Uh, my other concern was that I want to get a winch mounted somewhere right in here and there was little to no room between the hoses going underneath uh, between there and where the, the winch would be mounting so I was a little bit concerned about space for that. Okay, so I've got the fan wired in. It's basically set up now to draw air from the front through to the back. And like I mentioned before, the plan is to cut out a couple holes here to allow uh, exhaust heat from the cooler to heat the cab. Oh. It is wired in. And it does work. So that's great. Okay, well, I'm back out in the garage. I've uh, managed to slip out and grab some hose clamps and other bits and pieces that I need to get the oil cooler installed. So let's get going. So here is a really useful tip that uh, some people may not know. Uh, when it comes to hydraulic fittings, I think in the previous video I said that the 37 degree flare, the JIC fittings are really superior just for the fact that they provide uh, an excellent seal and take so little effort to, uh, to put them together. And so what a lot of people don't realize is uh, in the automotive industry they have um, an equivalent fitting it's called an AN and usually it's like an AN-8 or an AN-6 well the AN-8 for example that is equivalent to in every way shape and form equivalent to uh, a half inch uh, 37 degree JIC hydraulic fitting so you can go to your hydraulic shop and you can get fittings that will work with your automotive oil cooler and you can get 
everything plumbed in exactly how you need it. And these fittings are pretty much available anywhere, whereas those AN fittings, which can be quite expensive, um, you might only be able to get online. So keep that in mind. taken the time I've made another one of these um, fittings here and this get it in focus here this hose clamp method is absolutely phenomenal I am blown away how well this works all the hose is made up for the oil cooler side and I really have to say that this type of hose clamping using the wire in that tool is it really is a life changer like <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to go back to a, a standard worm gear clamp anymore this is just outstanding strongly recommend you either get a tool or make one like I did um, yeah it's good stuff so the next part this is this is what I'm really dreading I hate hydraulic fluid. It is so messy. It is so hard to clean up. It just gets everywhere. It ruins everything. Yeah. So I've got my crappiest clothes on because they're going to get just covered. And I'm going to start by pulling the belly pan off of the snow cat. That'll give me access to the oil filter. Because, so the oil filters it screws onto the bottom of the reservoir and when that comes off all the oil's gonna come dumping out and make a big mess again so yeah gonna get that off get these two hoses disconnected and uh, finish plumbing in the oil installed and the lines are all plumbed in so uh, the top cooler is for I guess it would be that side the, the right track and the bottom side is for the left track everything's plumbed in tightened up and all nicely routed inside the tunnel connected up to the pumps so I've got the new filter on there you can see the two new lines there. Installation was pretty easy. No complications really. So next step is to get some oil into this unit and get it purged and tested out. Hey guys, sorry about that. I put my phone into slow motion rather than uh, time lapse. So kind of missed me filling up the hydraulic system, but really, I just use, uh, I use a syringe so I can at least measure how much fluid I'm putting into the system. So I put uh, probably about 54 of those syringes in there. And I think that works out to, uh, where are we here? Probably about three, just over three liters. So that would account for the extra volume in the hydraulic cooler and the lines and whatnot. So uh, I think that we did a pretty good job uh, getting as much of the uh, previous oil out as possible so it should work fairly well. Oil cooler is working beautifully right now. Um, I went for a couple of really long rides and uh, today is one of those uh, kind of oddball days where it's actually above freezing so uh, it was probably about two degrees Celsius. Um, the peak operating temperature kind of on the motor there that's my point of reference uh, was 71 degrees Celsius so that's uh, about a full what would that be 45 degrees lower than uh, when I wasn't running the oil cooler so that is a substantial uh, difference this thing is really really uh, helping to dissipate that extra 
peat that's being generated. Um, that along with the the better hydraulic oil in there, it's uh, maintaining a kind of a thicker viscosity when um, it does get up to temperature. So there is no loss of power. Uh, the unit performs beautifully. passageway for warm air to come from that oil cooler through into the cab. We'll see how much uh, heat that can actually throw into here. Uh, next thing I'm gonna work on quickly here is uh, I've got this is a this is a strip heater I was talking about. This is 120 volts and 125 watts. This thing uh, it gets ripping hot Okay, so I have the heater mounted. I use the same uh, wire hose clamp technique with the same tool, and my gosh, that works so incredibly well. It's unreal. I've got it wired in, um, so you have to use a high temperature wire because it gets hot, and you have to use non insulated lugs because it gets hot. So I ran the wire there and then I have it just grounded out right there just to keep everything uh, safe so it's plugged in right now I'm gonna see how well it's gonna heat up alrighty so I got the LED headlights installed I think I'm gonna go get two more so I can put them uh, like side by side. Basically have four up front. I think that'll look pretty cool. Um, they're super bright, which is great. So that's excellent and they really, they draw a fraction of the power that the uh, incandescent bulbs would pull. So yeah. As far as the oil heater goes, I have had this thing running for about 20 minutes. And so that strip heater there, it's up to about 150 degrees Celsius. It is getting nice and hot. And the heat sink there, just above the heater, the reservoir is at about 43. That's excellent. And then the back side of the reservoir is at about 32. So that's gonna work just perfectly for preheating the oil before uh, we get going. All right guys, well, that's about all I had planned for this video. I'm uh, very pleased with uh, how well the oil cooler worked on the uh, hydraulic system. And it's nice to get a bunch of other little odds and ends tidied up like the headlights and the oil heater. Um, Really, at this point, I would say that the Snowcat is is complete. It uh, it really doesn't need anything else, um, aside from just some adjustments here and there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing how uh, how it could do out on the trails and get some hours on it and hopefully get some videos of uh, the unit in action for you. And yeah, thanks for checking out this video.